Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first and second rounds of the 2018 NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. Uh, my name is Doug Kelly. I'll be your moderator through the weekend. A couple of um, house cleaning items before we get started here. The satellite coordinates for the entire tournament, uh, your contact is Ron Masadi. The satellite coordinates are AMC dash 15 slash K 20 D and the frequencies are 471.575 megahertz 470.850 megahertz the sports information director for uh, all of the schools will be uh, let Brian Beyer handles that for Iona Iona comes to us from the uh, MAC conference located in New Rochelle, New York, which is just outside of New York City. Our uh, student athlete guests from Iona today are Sam Cassell Jr., John Sevier, Taylor Bessick, and Jordan Washington. We have people with uh, roving microphones to uh, assist you in asking questions. We would request that if you want to ask a question, Please identify yourself and your affiliation. So uh, without any further ado, uh, we'll get it started. Gentlemen, welcome. Sam, could you lead us off a little bit, talk about your season and uh, what it's like uh, coming the whole way across country? Uh, it was a good season, up and down season, but uh, we stuck together. We stuck together throughout the season. Uh, we won our conference. Uh, that's a, that was our main goal during the season. Uh, this big guy right here led us th led us the whole season right here. We was his, we was his, uh, his supporting cast, and we just happy to be here. Question to the gentleman in the corner. Howie Kasoy, New York Post. Guys, for all of you, I mean, this is something you've been waiting for a long time. Some of you have been here, but to be in the situation where you're not only playing a tournament game, but potentially your last game. Can you tell me what the balance of emotions is and how you're feeling in that regard? I don't know. I mean, 
it's just a good experience to come out here to Sacramento and um, knowing that we MAC championships and try to uh, play against a team that likes to get in transition the same way we do. Joe? Oh, man, that trip was very long, man. I was tired of being on that plane, you know, but I had my own role, a little bit of leg room. And it's very nice out here. I haven't, I've haven't, never been out here before, and it's very nice. Uh, to answer the question, it's very nice to get out all the snow. Uh, it's good to see some palm trees and sunshine, so. <laughs> Okay, Sam, Cassell, I'm sorry, right here. Tony Harvey, Sacramento Observer. Um, did you ever think it would be like this, you know, you transferring from UConn, come to Iona, and you'd be sitting right where you were at this moment, you know? Did that ever go through your mind, you know, when you wanted to leave the Huskies to come here, I mean, to the school that you're at right now, and boom, you're on the big stage? Uh. Uh, yes, that's the main reason why I came to Iona. Uh, I just know it's a winning school, winning background. And when I came here, these guys, that's all they talked about was winning, getting back to the NCAA tournament. And me coming here, I just knew I just had to, that, to help to get them back there. And we're here. Jordan, your initial reaction watching Oregon, the film of them, you mentioned them in transition. Kind of, they lost one of their big guys. What are you seeing? I mean, they've only had one game without Boucher, but just kind of your initial scout on the Ducks. Oh, uh, man, we just, um, all I got to say, we're just going to play hard. That's basically, we're going to play hard, get up and down, because they like to run a transition as fast as we do, so we're going to try to top that intensity. <coughs> yes, sir. Sam and John, you guys obviously like to get up and down. You like to shoot the three a lot. The Iona teams in the past couple of years really haven't gotten very hot on the stage. Do you think that it's kind of due for you guys to be at that? And do you feel like you can go out there and play loose like you have every other game? Uh, yes, I think so. Uh, it's just our, it's just Coach Clue's game plan. Uh, you know, um, if we throw it into the big fella, they double team in the big fella. He's gonna kick it out. We just have it's, and it's our job. We have to make the shots. Uh, that's the main thing. We just have to make shots t tomorrow. Just like Sam said, I mean, we play together and get this win tomorrow. Joe. Uh, we just excited to be here. So everyone pretty focused on the game plan, focused in practice. Like the intensity level is picked up in practice. Like we really want to be here. We really want to show that we belong here. So everybody just is more focused and like ready to go. Janie. Um, Ellie Lieberman, SB Nation. And for you, Jordan, um, what's it like to match up against Dylan Brooks tomorrow? Well, he's a he's a very tough player. So we're going to try to match up with him as we're going to try to do a lot with him because he's a very tough player. Hi guys, Janie McCauley from Associated Press. Have you, what are your first impressions of uh, the arena and you know it's a brand new arena where the Kings play and pretty pretty snazzy. Oh uh, man, we didn't, we didn't even go to the arena yet. We're going to go to the arena in a couple, couple of, uh, probably after this. So we didn't really see the arena yet. Oh, I think it's going to be very beautiful to play on uh, this court. Okay. Taylor, uh, what I sh should ask you right after I asked them, you also are a transfer. You came a little earlier. What was your thoughts, you know, coming in here and then once again being on this big stage? Uh, it's exciting to be here because I came here as a freshman uh, with GMU. Then I came again with Iona last year and now this year. So it actually feel good that we come back to back uh, MAC championships and go into March Madness. So I'm just excited to be here. Different schools, I mean, that, that has to be, you know, unique in itself. Yeah, I think uh, I'm grateful that I was able to 
uh, come here with both schools. It's just a lot of hard work, and I just got lucky. And thanks to Coach Clues, I was able to play here. Josh Peter, USA Today. Sam, when's the last time you played your dad one-on-one -on -one and had a turnout? Uh, last summer, I got him. I beat him. Beat him bad. Too slow now. <laughs> too slow. Too slow now. <laughs> yeah, he's a competitive guy. He always want to rematch, but I don't want to play him again. I'm good. I'm up. Sam, I'm going to pay you back on your dad. Uh, but you probably know, he probably told you, but he had one of his best playoff series against the Sacramento Kings in the playoffs 2004 or so. Did he ever bring that up? Do you ever see that on any uh, old footage? Uh, the crazy thing about it, um, before we came out here, I, I put him in YouTube, and that, and that series popped up when he had like 40 first round, first game. So I tried to study his tape to take his moves. So I've seen it a couple of times. Sam, in regards to Oregon, is there, I mean, they come in obviously as a favorite. Do you think that you can take advantage of that in some way, that there is more pressure on them, that if you keep it close early on, that they could get tight? Uh, yes, we're the underdog, so it's no pressure on us. It's just for us to go out there and play eye on a basketball. And if we do that, I think we'll be fine. You guys are a really strong three-point shooting team. Do you feel any pressure to make any more threes tomorrow than usual? Uh, no, I don't find there's any pressure. Uh, we just, as long as we go out there and just play our games and take good shots and open shots, I think we'll be fine. Any other questions? Okay, gentlemen, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Coach Kloos will be with us in just a moment. Thanks, guys. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference Championship over Siena. I believe I said the MAC earlier. That's not quite correct. Uh, this is the MAAC, which is the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, just to clear that up. Coach, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks a lot. Okay, we have the head coach of the Gales now in his seventh year, Tim Cluse. Tim, uh, could you give us just a little overview on your season and uh, what it took to get here? Uh, we had an up and down season early on. We had a great tournament out in Alaska, winning that tournament there. Uh, I think we finished. 12 and 4 in our last 16 games. Our players have worked really, really hard for us and gone through a lot of adversity this year and really come together as a group, and I'm really proud of them, and we're really, really thrilled to be here. Questions? Uh, Coach Joe Davidson, Sacramento B. You're a New York guy, East Coast guy. Have you been out 
to Sacramento before. How was your trip? How long was the, f the flight and everything was okay? I've never been to Sacramento. I've been out west to, to California several times before. Love it out here. Great trip and everything's beautiful so far and we're looking forward to tomorrow. Uneventful. Hi, Coach. Janie McCauley from AP. Uh, Hi. What, what have you seen of Oregon so far and, and just the, the strength of the conference, the Pac-12 and everything? Pac-12 is tremendous this year. Uh, Oregon is just one heck of a team. They're talented from top to bottom. They run and gun and they can really shoot. I love the way they share the basketball. They don't turn it over. Um, they play with a tremendous amount of energy. Their transition offense is really, really good. They have a number of guys that Obviously, Dylan Brooks being the main player, but they can all play and they can all score, and they play with a lot of passion and energy. It's going to be a very challenging game, but we're really looking forward to it. Coach, I know some of your guys were here last year. They've been here in other times. For you, I guess, is there anything that you know now going into this tournament that you didn't know in, say, 2012? Um, I'd like to say yes, but... I guess it's just the experience. I've been to it as a player, so I understand what that piece is about. I think trying to relate to our players how to handle the tournament and us as a coaching staff managing their time, their legs, their energy, and their attitude going into the game is very important and trying to manage that better and give them a better chance to be successful. Just to follow up, I guess, what is the attitude that you're trying to manage or how do, you, how do you have them going into it? Well, I think we have a tremendous amount of energy as you get close to this game. You don't want them to use it all up before the game, and they're very excited today in, in our workout that we already had earlier today. So not overdoing it on the practice court, showing them a lot of video, talking about it, letting them enjoy the moment, making sure they're getting proper rest, proper food. You know, it's hard for young men who have all that energy to go to bed at a reasonable hour, so making sure that they get their sleep and all that and that they're not up talking or messing around. All the little things that you can do to manage it and just talk about all the positives that we have as a team and what we've done well this year and how we can use those within the game and then talk about their strengths and really stay focused on the, the task at hand and when we get to the game time, just really make it about one play at a time, one possession at a time and don't think at a bigger picture than that. Ellie Lieberman, SB Nation. Um, how do you plan on winning this game um, in a new West Coast environment that's pretty close to Oregon? Well, obviously, it's an advantage for them, and they deserve it. They've had a tremendous year. Um, but when you go on the basketball court, it's maybe the best man win. We don't have to be better all year. We have to be better tomorrow. Coach, uh, I only, you've been here three of the last five years. Uh, Obviously, this is not a, just a basketball team. This is a basketball program. Could you talk a little bit about, you know, this campus, this university, and the de their dedication and commitment to the program? I think our school has been terrific, right from the administration of the president on down with support. Our alumni have been great. When I got there, they wanted one thing. They wanted to continue the tradition of Iona College and have a strong basketball program there as part of that tradition. And I've had all the support I could ask for there. And I've been fortunate enough because of my assistant coaches and all the people we have there that work so hard to bring in quality student athletes who work really, really hard for us. And I'm just really, really proud. A lot of these guys have been overlooked either in the recruiting areas or went somewhere maybe and it didn't work out and had a, you know, a chip on their shoulder that they wanted to prove something. So we kind of take that little mentality that we have a lot to prove to people every single time we step on the court. And I love the guys who embrace that and they really work hard and have deserved everything they've gotten and couldn't be prouder of them. I was talking to Jordan earlier in the week, and he was mentioning how he's kind of looking forward to this because there's guys that he's not towering over, that he's just bullying in the paint, that he could maybe get refed properly. Do you think that that could be something that he could maybe play a little more free? Wouldn't that be great? Um, I, I hope because of the physicality that these referees and the teams are used to that there is a little bit more that's allowed in the post. In our league, Jordan is by far the strongest inside player in the league is very powerful and sometimes a little bump by him can be over exaggerated by the opponent and it's hard to referee that uh, at this level I'm looking forward to him hopefully being on the floor for 30 minutes or so do we have any further questions for the coach okay Tim thank you very much thank you very much
Our next team will be Rhode Island at uh, 1205. Student athletes first, followed by the coach.
Check one, two.
Okay, we have the gentleman from Rhode Island. Uh, one thing to help out the ladies who are doing the transcribing, please wait for the microphone to come your direction before you ask a question. That will be a very uh, good thing for us and we appreciate the cooperation. We'll get as many questions as possible. Um, our, our student athletes from Rhode Island, Hassan Martin, E.C. Matthews, Jared Terrell, and Curran Iverson. Uh, E.C., let's start with you. Uh, talk a little bit about your season and uh, the trip out here all the way from Kingston, Rhode Island. Uh, we're glad to be here. But um, the season, it was, uh, it was ups and downs. You know, we had our glory moments, and we had moments that, uh, you know, we wasn't too proud of. But um, all of those moments brought us here. Um, we were blessed enough to uh, play good in a A-10 tourney and win that. And, uh, we got a chance to play now in the NCAA tournament. So we're glad to be here. Let's open it up for uh, questions for our student athletes. Certainly somebody has one. Um, for all the guys, um, looking back at the, the run in Pittsburgh, what worked for you guys specifically at the offensive end? Um, um, just specifically moving the ball around, just passing it very well. Um, I think our defense started our offense in most cases, just getting stops and rebounds and being able to run in transition um, and just being able to make shots. Uh, like Jared said, you know, our defense really did spark our offense, you know. Um, Guys were tenacious on defense, and I uh, was able to get out and uh, hit shots on offense. And our confidence was out the roof. That was another thing that really helped us get get that championship in Pittsburgh. Um, yeah, we take pride in our defense, and um, you know we're very unselfish on offense, and we we trust each other and know each other's spots and and, what, and like that. So uh, when we are making shots, it just it, uh, it turns our level of play up to to another level. Just like how I say, you know, our defense led the offense. Um, our main thing was, you know, finding people who, who was getting it going, like EC or JT, you know, they started to spark. Um, we kept getting them the ball. And then once Haas got it going, you know, I just tried to contribute, you know, by just playing more defense. For Jared and EC, I mean, you guys really like to get up and pressure the ball, send the defense behind the three-point line. Just what goes into doing that effectively? and I mean, what have you guys noticed from just this team? Why are you so effective at getting in the guys' grills, I guess? Uh, well, it starts in practice like early in the season. We just do a lot of workouts like that, just defense, uh, defensive drills. And um, just containing and being smart, not, not being too aggressive when you're following, but pressuring the ball smart and just making sure that the other team doesn't run the offense smooth. Yeah, and just um, you know, we try we we try to uh, knock the knock the teams off of uh, running their plays smoothly, and um, when we see one person you know getting into their defender, uh, we try to feed off of that, and we try to do it to whoever we playing, and therefore uh, we just play defense uh, as a whole like very good. So, Um, what does it mean to all of you guys to bring Rhode Island back to the tourney for a long time? Uh, it means a lot to me, especially that this is my last year here. You know, um, going out as a warrior, you know, um, hasn't been hasn't been done in almost two decades, and um, not only to get to the tournament but to win the Atlantic Ten championship. So that that really means a lot, and um, just something that I'll never forget. And I'm real excited to start this tournament. Uh, just for the just for the program. As a whole, uh, it just means a lot, uh, as well as myself. And just to get these two guys on the right and the left of me uh, to where they need to be, um, we're just a good family. What your teammate said, um, it means a lot. You know, you tore up your knee, you had an ACL tear, mm -hmm. first game of the season. Can you talk about that journey, you know, getting to, you know, coming through rehabilitation and then, you know, going through these games and here you are back in the tournament, oh, in, into the tournament after that uh, series. Yeah, um, a year ago, uh, around this time, you know, I was rehabbing and um, our season was over. And um, the fact that a year later, now that we're here and we, uh, you know, these are goals we had going into the summer workouts and going into the season is uh, winning the A-10, you know, championship. And, 
um, having an NCA birth. Um, I mean, it's what it's all about. Um, I think we just getting started. Uh, I feel like um, the ups and downs and everything that did happen, you know, the injuries that we all had and, you know, the uh, not really living up to our, our potential um, from the media, so to speak, it, uh, it made us, like, really strong and very strong, and we wouldn't be here without that. Uh, EC, I know a year ago when the NCAA games were in Providence, you went uh, to watch Buffalo with Coach Hurley. Um, what did you learn from that experience? What did you take away from it that, that made you want to play in it as well? Uh, it's nothing like it. Um, you know, I was, I was a fan in the crowd, but just seeing uh, the amount of people there and, uh, and the level of play and how hard the teams play and how every detail you got to be really focused and, and uh, put your all into it. Um, it's a blessing just to, uh, to be a part of that. And um, I think uh, our team, we're going we're gonna to feed off that very well, and we're going to play hard. We're going to play very hard on Friday. I guess for uh, Grant and Hassan, what is your um, assessment of the matchup against Creighton's got a big guy who's getting some NBA uh, hype? What's it going <laughs> to take to – to slow him down and, and to be effective on, on your end of the floor? Uh, he's a really tall guy, so I just got to try to push him off the block, you know, not let, not let him get, like, uh, catch it close to the basket because he's seven feet, so he can just turn and score. So uh, I just got to be real physical with him, push him off the block, and um, just force him to take um, shots that he's not comfortable with taking. Same thing like how I said, you know, you know limit his, his post catches, you know, and um, try to be as much physical as we could with him, be more aggressive. Um, I'm going to try to do my best, you know, to help Haas out down there. And um, I guess I'm guarding you know, a, a good shooter, so I got to stay close to him as possible. Excuse me, Karan, you had a, a little bit of NCAA tournament experience at Memphis uh, in, in Stanford, did it at Indiana. Have you guys talked with, with your teammates about that at all and kind of shared those experiences? You know, um, yeah, I, t I told a couple of players on my team, you know, it's the best feeling ever. Um, I went there with Memphis, you know, we we won the first round, we beat George Washington, we made the second round and played Virginia, and then we lost. But um, ever since then, you know, I told myself, you know, I want to make it back. And this has been a great role for us, and I'm finally here. Any other questions for these gentlemen? Right in front. Uh, Hassan, you guys have played well now for a long time. You've won eight games in a row. Um, is there anything in common in, in those games that you guys have done well that, that has allowed you to, to play so well for so long? Uh, I feel like we just finally started clicking as a unit, you know. Um, this is how we expected to play earlier in the season, with all those close losses we had, but now it's all coming into play, you know. Guys are really getting going. EC's back to himself as he was before he got injured, you know. And that, again, our defense has picked up drastically, you know. Our rebounding and our guys are real confident. So um, that's, all, that's what got us through those last eight games in the championship, confidence and guys getting back to themselves and us just clicking as a whole. Okay, gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Coach Hurley will be with us in uh, just a few minutes.
find my own here? <laughs> First time in almost 20 years, you figure, right? <laughs> slipped, slipped right in on you, Coach. <laughs> One thing, folks, uh, before we get the coach going here, um, if you want to ask a question, please state your name and affiliation. It helps the uh, folks doing the transcription. So without any further ado, the head coach in his fifth season at Rhode Island, Dan Hurley. Coach, can you talk a little bit about uh, your season overall and uh, coming out this way and yeah. that sort of thing? No, it's been, uh, you know, it's been an amazing journey this year for us. Um, you know, starting early in the year, you know, coaching uh, you know, in, in the preseason, a highly anticipated you know, team, a top 25 team in the preseason, and got off to a really good start. And... Um, you know, dealt with some injuries, uh, you know, key injuries to key starters, you know, through about two months of our season, um, you know, the end of the non-conference all the way through to, uh, you know, conference play. Uh, Hassan Martin, Jarvis Garrett, two of our, you know, very best players. And um, just our, our program and our team and coaches did a great job of kind of winning enough games, keeping our head above water until we were able to get healthy late in the year. And then, uh, you know, once we were able to get healthy late in the year, you know, we were able to resemble, you know, the, the team that, uh, that folks anticipated seeing, uh, you know, in the preseason. You know, a team that won, uh, you know, eight straight to end the year, including the conference championship and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, eight straight road or neutral site games. So, uh, you know, incredibly determined, uh, you know, team. So excited to be out here. So excited for our, our great fans and, you know, athletic director Thor Bjorn, so much has gone into getting this program, you know, right again after an 18-year absence, but we're back, and, uh, you know, we're excited to be here. Wait on the mic, please. John Miatawa with the Omaha World Herald. Uh, Coach, one of the other reporters mentioned that you and EC went to watch the NCAA tournament together last year. What was that experience like? Why did you want him to uh, kind of take it in, in that fashion? Yeah, we, we uh, you know, we, we, uh, we went up to Providence uh, to see you know, EC's old high school coach, uh, former Romulus state championship coach. Uh, when he coached EC there, he was coaching University of Buffalo, you know, versus Miami in the tournament. And, uh, you know, EC was making, obviously, amazing progress with the – you know, with, with, with the torn ACL, and um, you know, I wanted him to see what what the uh, atmosphere was like. I wanted to, him to see and feel and, and sense, you know, what uh, you know what it would be like if we were able to obviously uh, put ourselves in a position to get there, put the work in, make the sacrifices, continue to push himself in his rehab, you know, so that he can, uh, you know, so that he can get on this national stage. Uh, you know, and have the eyes of the country on him. And we knew it would be a great story, you know, because this was a kid that, you know, nine minutes into the opener, opening uh, game of his junior year, you know, his, his whole world fell apart. So um, I think it's one of the great stories of the NCAA tournament here is, you know, is E.C. Matthews, uh, you know, his recovery from that devastating injury and then the fact that, you know, he led us, uh, you know, to this tournament along with, you know, obviously a number of other tremendous players. Bill Koch with the Providence Journal. Dan, uh, your guys were just in here. They seem pretty loose, pretty confident. Uh, mentally, are, are they at where you want them to be right now? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I think the best thing that, that, you know, once we got healthy late, the best thing that, you know, we, we had going for us was, uh, you know, was the edge. You know, I, I think we're, you know, one of the hardest playing teams in the country. You know, we really get after people. Uh, we, we try to make people uncomfortable. Um, you know, and then what, what we were able to add to that over the weekend in Pittsburgh was, was shot making and offensive confidence. You know, if, you know, if, if, if we're, you know, uh, uh, an elite defensive team, and if we're going to play as hard as anyone in the country, and then if, you know, we're going to have confidence and shot making at the offensive end, you know, I, I think that's why the guys kind of looked relaxed because, Kind of that's who we are right now. 
uh, Matt Kalhara, Sacramento Bee. Dan, uh, people here in, Sa oh, back here. Sorry, man. Uh, people here in Sacramento are probably familiar with your brother having played for the Kings, but uh, do you have any past experiences here and, and what's it like to be in Sacramento for your first uh, tournament appearance? Yeah, emotional, you know, uh, emotional for me, uh, just because, you know, my last time here, you know, I was watching my brother, uh, you know, uh, cling to his life and uh, in the hospital room, you know, uh, surrounded by his family. And, um, you know, it's just amazing how it's set up that we're now out here. Uh, you know, that, that I'm not sure how many times Bob's been out here, you know, since, but, you know, he'll be out here for the game tomorrow. And, um, you know, to see that Sacramento on that screen in the airport the other day was, was emotional. Um, <laughs> I'm going to keep it together up here, though. Um, but, you know, Bob will be here uh, along with, obviously, my family that's here and, and a bunch traveling from Jersey City. Will Gagan. Coach Shirley. Coach Shirley. This way. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Tony, that's all right. Tony Harvey, uh, Sacramento Observer. And uh, thanks for sharing that with us because I was here at that time you know, when your family was going through that with Bobby. Um, and you, you come from a coaching, a bat, let's not say not basketball, you come from a basketball family, you know, as well as a coaching. Uh, your older brother, he's coaching now at Arizona State. Your dad, he's a legendary coach on, on the East Coast from New Jersey. Uh, how was that, you know, to have all those minds in one household to come out to be as successful as you as your family is. Yeah, kind of one-track minds there, not real well-rounded people, unfortunately. Uh, you know, we even dragged my mom into it. Uh, she was the scorekeeper. So, um, no, I mean, listen, it, 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 it was our lives. I mean, you know, it, it, it was our family, you know, obviously my father, tremendous passion for basketball, tremendous passion for, for Jersey City and St. Anthony High School. Uh, and, and in the city itself, it's an, it's an amazing basketball city. So, uh, you know, you grow up in a, in a city like that and, um, you know, the, the, it's got some of the best courtyard games in the, you know, in the metropolitan area and, you know, just like we learned so much about coaching basketball just from going to practices from when we were young kids, five, six years old. Our babysitting with my dad was like doing ball handling drills at his varsity practices. That was his idea of babysitting. Uh, you know, and, um, you know, that's just kind of how we grew up. Uh, you know, when we weren't doing that, we were watching, you know, games on TV. And, like, through osmosis, we were just learning so much about tactics and, and relationships with players and, and you know, and, and how to take a season through a, a team through a season. It was just, it was like living a coaching clinic for, you know, 18 years. Will Gagan from The Independent. Uh, Dan, as you look at the Creighton matchup, what's the biggest challenge with defending them? Yeah, I mean, they like the Golden State Warriors at college with, with how they push the ball and how they shoot threes and, you know, and, and great, uh, well, I mean, the best offensive team we will have played this year uh, with, without question. I mean, you know, Greg McDermott, uh, just, um, you know, the stuff they run, the kind of the nuances of it, you know, he, he's maybe, you know, looks like you know, he could be a tremendous NBA coach based on how good he is on offense. I mean, Foster's a potential pro. Patton's a, a, a you know, definite lottery pick. You know, Thomas is a tremendous player. And then they surround those three guys with shooters. You know, and they're an underrated defensive team. You know, so, um, and they've adjusted well since Watson's been out. They've found themselves. So, you know, um, it, it's going to be a, you know, a heck of a game for us to, to stay close in and hopefully have a chance to steal. Hi, Shelly Smith from ESPN. Um, could your family take the Alfords? <laughs> take the Alfords, you said? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we, we did be some interesting, uh, you know, kind of family battles here. The Alfords, that'd be a great battle right there. You got, the, I think the Drews want a part of us too. The Millers, I think that we, we should do something here when the season's over, maybe like a three on three, get the old men involved too. Like a pay-per-view event or something, reality TV. <laughs> yes, I mean, but it will be held in Rhode Island, so they get these all get these folks there. It'd be great for our state, great exposure. Ellie Lieberman, SB Nation. Um, did your dad give you any advice um, before approaching this first round matchup? Well, he was at the Atlantic 10 championship game and he just kept slipping notes to the managers to hand to me, uh, which I thought was you know, ill-timed because it was his first game in probably months. Um, not, you know, he just gives me so many little basketball things. It's almost like 
you know, like a UB Brown. Uh, my, my father has a kind of a mind like UB where, you know, he, you know, after a game, he'll give me three or four things that, you know, are probably things I know, but they're just such subtle, smart basketball reminders that, um, uh, you know, just that, that's why after every game, you know, I, 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 I call my dad like a good son. Coach Thortrip from KTV in Omaha. Have you been uh, feeding Preston any misinformation this week and, you know, his influence on the Blue Jays this year? I've been trying. I tried to throw him off a little bit. We spoke, <laughs> we spoke two days ago, you know, and, you know, I, I, I uh, tried to talk to him about all the adjustments we've made since he hasn't been here, how the style of play has changed so much. Uh, you know, Preston, um, you know, is, is another person that's responsible for this program being where it is. You know, he, he helped in an enormous way with recruiting early on, taking over a program that had bottomed out, you know, helping us build the culture, you know, and, and, and Preston's a great friend. I mean, it, we're so thrilled to be in the tournament, you know, but, it, you know, it does stink on some level uh, to go up against a friend and then to go up against, a, a, you know, a, a former player that has so much pride in, in URI and in his time here. So I know he's hurting. He's hurting a lot more than I'm hurting right now. Any other questions? Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Appreciate it. The Ducks will be next.
Okay, welcome back from um, Oregon. We have uh, their players, student athletes, Jordan Bell and Tyler Dorsey. Uh, fellas, first of all, could you tell us a little bit about uh, your season and uh, what it led to to bring you here? Um, I thought our season was uh, pretty up for the most part. Um, we just uh, recently lost one of our best players, Chris Boucher, but I think um, we can still do something special this year with the players we have. Questions for the, these gentlemen? Come now, somebody must have one. Did, did Chris make the trip? Yeah, he yeah, did. He's here. He's so he's with you guys? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how will he help you um, from the sidelines? Um, he's gonna give us energy, and um, he's always keeping us going. Um, he's just gonna give us energy, providing energy on the bench for us, and keep encouraging us, and pointing out things um, he sees on the floor, on the bench, that we're not doing right, and um, helping us that way. <laughs> Fellas, what, uh, was there any one game that was a turning point in your season? Colorado game probably that really uh, opened our eyes a lot because we have been not playing our best brand of basketball, but we kept winning, so we kept getting away with it. I think the loss to Colorado really opened our eyes and um, showed us that we can be beat any um, any day. So we, just if we play our brand of basketball, we should be fine. Uh, Jordan specifically, uh, how has preparation this week? been different without without Chris there for you? Uh, it's been very different. I have to um, try to be even more aggressive on the defensive end and offensive end, knowing that he's um, not coming in to sub me out or come uh, come play with me um, during the game. So, And just th trying to stay out of foul trouble, just me and Dylan Brooks being smart on the floor. Um, also um, trying to get try to get as much conditioning in it as I could as possible uh, during the last couple of days because knowing I'm going to play more minutes and everybody's going to step it up a little bit more. Did you guys see Cavell progress at all the last the last few practices? Is, is he a different player now for you guys? Um, definitely. Um, Cavell, he, we see him do that in practice every day that y'all saw that he did in the Pac-12 tournament. So um, he's going to come and be ready on, um, to hit the glass and make defensive plays for us and hit that jump shot or the jump hook he has down low. And um, he's been effective for us, and I think he's going to step up and be ready. What do you expect from the conference in the tournament? I mean, a lot of people don't look at the Pac-12 like – those of us who see you all the time, but what do you expect the, your, your conference to do? I think we're going to go uh, pretty far this year. I know last year we had a down year where most of the teams losing the first game, but I think this year, honestly, that we can get at least three teams in the uh, final four of us, Arizona, UCLA, and we can go pretty far with it. Iona plays pretty similar style. They like to run. They like to get up and down. They like to shoot threes a lot. How dangerous is that? I mean, you've seen first-round upsets over the years where a team gets hot from outside and – can just run with it. Um, uh, yeah, it's very dangerous. Um, they play four out, one in most of the time, and um, most of their guards um, can shoot 40% from the field. So containing that and running them off the line, um, watching them, they are pretty similar to Arizona State, who we played recently in the first round in the Pac-12 tournament. And um, they um, shoot a lot of contested shots and shoot tough shots and hit a lot of threes. So it's dangerous, but um, we've been preparing all week for that. Just get Tony Harvey, Sacramento Observer. Just getting back to the previous question, how did the Pac-12 prepare you guys? Uh, the, the conference doesn't get that much respect as it should. Cal, yeah, they had a couple bad losses, so they're not here. But you know, you guys seem to walk through that minefield pretty good. Can you talk about how it is from both of you preparing yourself? You know, going through just that conference alone to get to this point. Um, I think the conference play has uh, prepared us a lot for these uh, tough games. With every team in the Pac-12, every team is different. There's all t different type of matchups, different styles of play, and uh, different things like that. So I think it prepared us a lot. And 1 through 12, none of the games were easy. Like, even Oregon State only won one game this year. When we played at their house, we were only up by, like, three at half or something like that. So every game was pretty tough. 
Um, so I think that really prepared us a lot on how to uh, get ready for these games. Um, definitely, um, the Pac-12 play, the conference play, um, got us mentally and physically ready for um, the best part of the season in March. And um, the Pac-12 tournament helped us a lot. Um, losing that last game helped us mentally to see how we're going to do without Chris and um, now what we need to do going forward. And um, we're going to use that game as motivation and um, making this run during March. Ed Fletcher with the Sacramento Bee. I know you guys just got here, but do you have any early impressions of the city or the Golden One Center? Um, yeah, that Old Town area is pretty nice. We went to eat last night at a restaurant over there, and um, I never been here or been around Sacramento, but it's pretty nice. Any other questions? Thank you, gentlemen. Coach Altman will be here shortly.
with us now in his uh, seventh season at the helm of the Oregon Ducks, the head coach, Dana Altman. Uh, coach, first of all, can you talk a little bit about your season to date and the mood of your team coming into this uh, region? All right. Um, we were 16-2 and two, uh, in the Pac-12, uh, tied with uh, Arizona for the championship. Uh, had an opportunity to meet them in the tournament final and uh, lost a clo close ball game, 83-80. Um, to 80. So it's, uh, it's been a good year. I've enjoyed working with the players. Uh, we're anxious to go at uh, 11 o'clock on, on Friday morning, tomorrow morning. Um, the only negative, uh, we lost uh, Chris Boucher, uh, a, a very good player for us last two years to a knee injury in the semifinal of our conference tournament against Cal. So uh, that's been a little bit of a blow to us, but uh, the guys responded. We've had a couple good practices, and uh, I think we'll be ready to go tomorrow. Questions for Coach Altman, and please uh, state your name and uh, affiliation prior to asking your question. And wait on the mic. Ken Corbett, Topeka Capital Journal. How, how unique is this situation for you with Creighton and Kansas State, both here, two of your former teams, and do you still kind of keep tabs on both both programs? Uh, sure. You know, uh, I spent seven years at Kansas State and uh, 16 at Creighton. Uh, getting old uh, but uh, no I uh, really enjoyed Kansas State uh, you know two of our children were born there and uh, you know it was a great seven years uh, I really enjoyed it uh, and, and Creighton you know the 16 years we spent there uh, were, were really enjoyable uh, really haven't thought too much ahead uh, obviously we've got Iona tomorrow and, and uh, that's what we're pretty much focused on but uh, no those those two places um, were really great to my family and, and myself and uh, really enjoyed our time there Mark Wicker Los Angeles Daily News what's the toughest thing gonna be in replacing Boucher what thing did he do that, that you're going to have the toughest time replacing from the guys you bring off the bench well his shot blocking without a doubt um, you know, he, he led the conference in shot blocking and, and uh, you know, three a game, and, and that's not counting the number of shots he altered, you know. So you take the three that he blocked and another three or four that he altered, that's seven shots in the paint that uh, he had a great effect on. So uh, that'll, be, that'll be the biggest thing. The second biggest thing is the rebounding. Um, his three-point shooting, we've got a lot of volunteers to shoot threes, so that's not much of a problem. But uh, the shot blocking and rebounding uh, and his personality. Chris is uh, very popular on our team. You know, he's uh, easygoing personality. Um, you know, we will miss the, the things he does for us, but uh, the intangibles that he brought uh, are going to leave probably a bigger hole. Coach Holt. Um, I just have to ask you this because you just mentioned that, you know, getting old, but just like a bottle of wine, you getting better. But um, you spent 16 years at Creighton, like you said, the last seven here at Oregon. Um, well, you haven't been under 21 in wins, 39 and 29 wins the last couple of What is the recipe for success for you? I mean, you, you've been doing a great job there. Is it the coaching staff, coaching, recruiting? What's there for you? Well, it, it starts with players. There, there's no doubt about that. We've been really fortunate, uh, uh, you know, to have young men that uh, are talented but that also want to work with us. You know, it uh, you know it takes players that are willing to sacrifice and be part of a team and, and uh, you know, want to compete. And so uh, we, we've had really good young men. I've, I've been fortunate throughout my career uh, you know, I can't ever think of a year that I haven't enjoyed going and working with the team, you know, and uh, they haven't always enjoyed working with me, but I, I've really enjoyed working with them. And, uh, and this year's team's no exception. Uh, we've got really good players that are unselfish, really competitive, uh, led by Dylan Brooks. He's, he's one of the most competitive young men I've had an opportunity to coach. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's about players. And then secondly, uh, I've got a really good staff. You know, I've been fortunate over my career to have guys that uh, have stuck with me. Uh, you know, 
Kevin Ken is on our staff. He's been with me close to 20 years now. And uh, Tony Stubblefield may be the best I've ever worked with. Uh, and he's been with me all seven. Uh, Josh Jamison was there when, when I arrived and uh, it does a tremendous job. Uh, Mike Minega, you know, I'm really fortunate in my years at Creighton, Kansas State, I had really good staff. So players, first of all, because uh, 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 there's, there's no coach uh, that's ever won a game without a really good, really good team. And, uh, but then the staff has, has been extremely loyal and, and has stayed with us a long time. Austin Meek, Register Guard. Dana, going back to November, um, when you made the decision to start Peyton and bring Casey off the bench, what went into that and how hard was that to do given that Casey had been a starter for you on a, a team that made? You know, uh, fortunately the players, you know, didn't make as much about it as, as some of the media and other, you know, I mean, uh, Casey wants to win. You know, Casey's all about the team. He's really unselfish. You know, it's a, it's a blow because everybody likes to have their name, you know, and run out there and act silly and, you know, all that. Uh, but Casey also knows that, you know, his production has gone up. He's, he's been a, you know, I've said all along we had seven starters. Chris Boucher and Casey started all for us last year. Jordan Bell came off the bench last year. You know, we just reversed some roles on, you know, who gets their name called out. Uh, but the minutes, uh, what they bring to our team, didn't really change. It hadn't really changed that much. So uh, for me, you know, it was not that big a deal. I, I like I said, I know the guys like to like to start. Everybody likes to start. But um, you know, fortunately for me, we've got young men who are unselfish, and and winning's a priority, and and being part of a, a championship team. You know, those guys wanted to win the Pac-12, and. Uh, they were heartbroken when, when we didn't beat Arizona the other night. You know, we didn't go there to get second, you know, and, uh, and so they were heartbroken. So, you know, those guys are competitors and, and want to win. And so thankful that uh, they're unselfish enough to not get caught up in all the hype of, of who's, uh, who's starting. Dana, is Iona part of the, the challenge of them, the fact that, I mean, they were in the tournament last year. They got a couple transfers who played in this tournament that you figure they come in here, you know, maybe not as awestruck as some 14 seeds might be? Well, they're not going to be awestruck. They, they played Iowa State tough last year, and, uh, you know, they got a very competitive team. They're going to space the floor and, and shoot a ton of threes, and, um, you know, we're going to have to fight the dribble, contest those threes when – you take 25 threes a game and shoot 40% from three, you know, you're going to win some games. They've had 19 games where they've hit 10 or more threes. So, you know, our perimeter defense is really going to be challenged. And, you know, we don't have Chris there to protect the rim and push out like we traditionally do. We've, we've had a very good defensive team on the, on the three-point line. And, and a big part of that is, you know, uh, the guy's security to go out and run at shooters knowing that somebody was protecting the rim. And um, we, don't, we don't have that luxury now. So uh, it changes a, a little bit of the way we're going to play defensively. But, um, you know, uh, Iona, they, they won't come in with, with any fear. They, they played Iowa State tough as all get out last year. And, and they're a good team that shoots the three and plays very aggressively offensively and defensively. Uh, we know we've got a work cut out for us. There's no, no doubt about that. Kristen Rogers, KEZI TV. Dana, you said you wanted to take some time after the Pac-12 tournament championship game to make adjustments with Chris out for the season for you guys. Obviously, you've played without him before, but what does that look like now, considering it is the tournament? Oh, it's not that much. Just a couple different things offensively that we want to do, and and defensively, we got to tighten things up with without him at the rim. But Cavell's anxious to play, and Cavell's you know, just got to play his game. You know, he doesn't need to do anything different. Uh, he's not Chris. They're, they're two totally different kinds of players, and we just got to play a little differently than we did with Chris. I, I kind of jump from the UK where Cavell's from. Could you tell us a bit about him as a person, what he brings to this locker room and to this team? Cavell is, has been very good to work with. Uh, you know, he was disappointed for a while because he wasn't getting to play as much as he wanted, and, and uh, 
I'd be uh, upset with him if he wasn't concerned. You know, I, I want guys that want to be on the floor. And uh, uh, the best thing is he handled it well. He kept coming to practice, working his tail off. Um, he's got tremendous upside. You know, I, I think he's going to be a really good player for us. But uh, he has filled in, you know, even before Chris, uh, Chris's injury, he was playing more for us and doing a tremendous job. But I uh, love the way he rebounds. Uh, I love the way he uh, tries to compliment everybody on the team. And, um, you know, he, he played well against Arizona. Uh, he did a good job filling in. And so our expectations for him uh, tomorrow are – to come out and, and give us 15 to 20 minutes and uh, to play his game, you know, not try to fill in for Chris, but, but be Cavell and, and play as well as Cavell can play. Uh, TJ Mahoney, Turner Sports. Can you talk about how big of an advantage it is to play somewhat close to home? And is that something you kind of stress during the uh, course of the year? You know, uh, not really. I, I, I know the guys, you know, some of the guys from the West Coast wanted to stay close. But, uh, you know, I'm not sure is a big difference, an hour plane flight, a two-hour plane flight. I, You know, I don't know. Uh, uh, we hope to have some fans here. You know, uh, our, our fans have been pretty good to us all season. So it would be nice to, to have a few here. But, uh, you know, you're on a neutral floor, and, and I'm not sure – that it makes all that much difference. Uh, it is nice, you know, if, if families are able to come, though. And I, I know, like, for Jordan Bell, who's from Long Beach, and Tyler's from, from L.A., you know, it, it's nice when you're closer and your, your, your family can, can get there a little easier. Coach, Tim Kruger from BlueJBanner.com. Uh, with Creighton on your side of the draw, and then we're here in Sacramento, a uh, guy plays here that calls his – his, uh, this arena home, Anthony Tolliver. I think you could comment just on his progression from when he was like a sophomore at Creighton all the way up through his successful NBA career. Well, Anthony is, uh, you know, just a fine young man, unique young man. Uh, you know, his freshman and, and uh, sophomore years didn't go as planned. Uh, he had some injuries that he fought through and, uh, um, you know, if in today's age, he'd have probably transferred because everything didn't go well. But uh, fortunately for us, he stuck with it. And uh, his junior year, you know, we we just rode him. He was phenomenal. And uh, we had some other injuries on the team. And uh, if it wouldn't have been for him, uh, you know, we would have really had a tough year. And then his senior year, uh, again, he was just a, a dominant figure for us. And... Uh, both on and off the floor, you know, just great young man. And, uh, you know, then he, he you know, it wasn't like uh, NBA stardom was thrust upon him. He went, you know, the hard overseas D league, uh, and he earned it. You know, he just threw perseverance and hard work. Um, and the type of young man that he is, he just earned it. And uh, he's earned his spot you know, on every roster he's been ever since. And, um, you know, I, I know he's, he had a big game the other night. I you know, pick up the paper every day and see what his stats are. And uh, you know, I had a big game in Orlando the other night, to, which they won. So, no, I'm really happy for him. Great guy, great family, and uh, uh, really, really happy what's what's happened for him since uh, since he left Crate. One more question over here. Dana, what have you seen from – Peyton, the last couple of weeks, how has he held up over the grind of the Pac-12 season, and what do you expect from him on this stage? Well, he's, um, you know, he's, he's played well. He, he wasn't as aggressive offensively in the conference tournament um, as he had been, uh, and some of that's probably my fault. You know, just uh, you know, I'm always barking at him about handling the ball and you know not turning the darn thing over, and, and uh, I probably probably got on him a little too much. So. You know, we need him to be a little more aggressive. Uh, he's, he's had a phenomenal year. I mean, he's handled the ball well. He and Casey uh, have done a great job. You know, they've uh, tagged team and played together a lot and um, really have done a good job. So, you know, both of them, you know, just need to relax and play and quit listening to me, you know, and, and just go and play because uh, – 
they've done a tremendous job in, in spite of me always after them. You know, point guard, you know, they just they catch more than, than most guys. You know, they got the ball in their hands. They're setting the tone defensively for us. Uh, so they catch a little bit more than most guys do. And uh, Peyton's handled it well. Casey's been phenomenal the three years. I had an opportunity to work with him. So they'll be fine. No, they'll be fine. Thank you, Coach. All right. Next up will be Creighton.
Okay, as we continue, our student-athletes from Creighton University, which is to be found in Omaha, Nebraska, Marcus Foster, Kyrie Thomas, and Cole Huff. Uh, questions encouraged, but please uh, give your name and affiliation to help out our transcribers up front. So, uh, fellas, I'll, I'll ask the first question myself. Uh, uh, talk a little bit about your season as a whole and uh, coming out here to Sacramento. Um, obviously, we got off to a really good start. Um, I think we got as far as number seven in the nation uh, before a few things didn't go our way um, with injuries and, you know, a, a couple of close losses. And, you know, from then our season has been kind of up and down. But um, unlike last year, I think we finished the, the regular season on a positive note. Uh, we went into the, the Big East tournament in the Madison Square Garden and uh, we got to the championship game. Unfortunately, we came up a little bit short, but I think we're, we're kind of riding a little bit of momentum right now, and you know we're, we're looking forward to continuing our success in the tournament. Kyrie? Uh, I would have to say Cole hit it right on the nail. Uh, momentum was going our way in the beginning of the season as we were ranked uh, number seven. Uh, then we uh, lost Maurice uh, to the ACL injury, which kind of uh, made everybody uh, sit back and uh, you know kind of really just embraced that, uh, made everybody else get better. Um, and then uh, after that, we came to a, a couple close losses. Um, and then after that, uh, we uh, went on a run in the tournament, lost to Villanova. Uh, but right now, we just uh, kind of went past that, got a nice little uh, seed in the, uh, in the tournament. And uh, we're just uh, ready to play. And uh, the guys are just kind of amped up right now. Marcus? Yeah, we, we got off to a really great start. You know, team people were talking about we were a great Final Four contender. And, you know, when Maurice went down, he was our leader, our vocal leader. He played hard on defense. He got teammates going. So it was kind of hard for us when we lost him. And we had to reinvent ourselves, which made us start playing up and down. We couldn't really get a rhythm. But I think last week in New York in the Big East uh, tournament, we really found out the team we were. We, we figured out how to, you know, pull all the pieces together. Even though we didn't finish that strong in the championship game, I think we learned a lot about ourselves that can carry us further in this tournament. Questions for our student athletes? Please wait on the mics. Thank you. Ken Corbett from Topeka Capital Journal for Marcus. Can you just kind of summarize the journey you've taken from, from your time at Kansas State to Creighton and maybe how you've grown and grown and changed over these past two years? Uh, yeah, I had to face a little bit of adversity with, you know, the circumstances I had at Kansas State and having to transfer to another school. And, you know, taking a year off is something I've never done in my whole career. So I had to reinvent myself. And I really just had to mature, you know, become a better teammate, better person on and off the court for my teammates. With, with that time off I, in the year I had, it made me become a better person. Hey, Marcus. Kellis rubbing out here from the Wichita Eagle. Good to see you again. Um, now that you've had some, you know, time to transfer and reflect on things, when, when you think back to that last season at Kansas State when it started off and you said that team had Final Four talent and then you end up winning, I think, 15 games, what, what just went wrong that year now that you think back to it? Uh, I, just, I just think that team, we just wasn't, you know, in it for each other. You know, I think we all had our individual mindsets of what we wanted to do and what we want to accomplish. You know, the, the talent was definitely there on that team. I just didn't think we bring, brought it together as a team standpoint. Mark. That's for Cole. Uh, Mark Wicker from the Los Angeles Daily News. How, how soon did you realize how good Patton was going to be? I know he, he had kind of a... Uh, meteoric uh, rise when he when he got to Creighton. What was it like watching him in preseason practice and then watching him on the floor? Well, it was it was hard to tell during preseason because we had a bunch of injuries. Uh, I wasn't always out there. Zach Hansen was recovering from injury. Uh, Toby was dealing with his with his ankle, and Martin was recovering from ACL injury. So he was really the only big man for a long time, and he was pretty dominant. We had smaller guys on him and whatnot. Um, but I mean, just. Going back to last year, his redshirt season, how hard he worked, and you know, for the skill set that he has, and at such a, a tall, a tall guy being seven foot, I mean, it's it was obvious to see that the sky was the limit for him. Um, I'd be lying if I tell you I wasn't a little bit surprised when the season started, just how quickly he put it all together. And you know, since we got the ball rolling, I think he's just kept building his confidence, and I mean, he's playing great basketball, and the sky's the limit for him.
Uh, Riley Gates, GoPowerCat.com. Marcus, when you look at the South region, just how tough is it? I mean, it seems like every team, 1 to 16, just has, has some sort of a threat and could easily find themselves in the Final Four. Yeah, it's definitely a lot of competition out there, but, you know, it's the NCAA tournament. You know, this is the time of the year where everybody's going to be playing their best basketball, so it's really everybody in the tournament is going to be a great team no matter what region you're in. So you got to be prepared and be ready to play every night. Marcus, what's been your favorite thing about playing at Creighton this year? Uh, I'd say the, the team atmosphere, the family atmosphere that we have on this team. You know, guys really love each other, and you see it on the court. You know, team, we're playing hard, not for just ourselves, but for our teammates and our coaching staff. And then when you have a fan base like us, you, you love to play on the court and, you know, make our fans proud when they see how good we're playing. Any other questions? Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Coach McDermott will be here momentarily.
Okay, we have the head coach of the Creighton Blue Jays, Greg McDermott, to visit with us. Coach, uh, talk a little bit about your trip out here, and uh, you've uh, literally traipsed uh, east to west, counting the Big East tournament, and now uh, being out here. Well, obviously, we're excited uh, to be back in the tournament after a, a couple years of not making it, uh, and feel pretty good about coming off the Big East tournament, where we, you know, the first two rounds we were able to beat a couple teams in Providence <coughs> and Xavier who were both in the tournament uh, before losing to Villanova in the final. So uh, really proud of this team and, and kind of how they've, uh, how they've come together in some tough circumstances uh, and continue to play better basketball as the season has worn on. Um, Obviously, we've got a great opponent in Rhode Island, so we'll have our, uh, our hands full tomorrow afternoon, but we're, we're excited for the opportunity. Questions for Coach McDermott? Please state your affiliation after your name. Greg, I'll ask one. Um, when you look back on that uh, Big East tournament, that's, that's arguably one of the toughest tournaments there are in <coughs> college basketball, and you did, uh, as you mentioned, get through a couple of rounds. Uh, how does that caliber of competition prepare any team, really, for the NCAA tournament? Well, you know, I think playing the quality of schedule that we've played really all season long, when you're, when you're playing in a league where seven teams, seven of your ten teams are in the NCAA tournament, uh, there aren't a lot of nights off. So, you know, you have to prepare yourself to play every game and certainly in the, NC, or in the Big East tournament, uh, that's the case as well. And, uh, you know, the environment at Madison Square Garden was incredible. Uh, you know, a sold out championship game on a Saturday night in New York City at the Garden uh, is, is as good as it gets. And uh, the enthusiasm, the build up, the excitement for that, uh, I think is a good prep for how you have to prepare yourself for an NCAA tournament game because it's much the same. Uh, you have to keep your emotions in check. You have to make sure those emotions uh, are used to your advantage and, and the enthusiasm doesn't become a disadvantage. Uh, so I think our guys have a handle on that. And, uh, you know, it's also taxing to play three games in three days uh, against the competition we played. So, you know, after a couple days off, we've had some good preparation for Rhode Island and uh, hopefully we're up for that challenge tomorrow. Looking at uh, Rhode Island's tapes, uh, what stands out about the most to you and what will be the toughest thing for you in that game? I think they're one of the better defensive teams uh, we've seen all year. Uh, and their numbers certainly support that. Uh, you know, 40% defensive field goal percentage, 29% uh, is all they're allowing from the three-point line. And, you know, not only do they uh, – <clears throat> Not only is their three-point field goal percentage good, is good, the number of three-point shots that you can find against them uh, is rather low as well. So they do a good job of running you off the three-point line and challenging you when you're there. Uh, but, you know, E.C. Matthews is as good of wing uh, as we will play played against all year. Terrell is terrific, uh, shoots the basketball, can get to the rim. And, uh, you know, Hassan Martin is always someone that I've been impressed with going back to high school. And, uh, you know, he's physical, he's long, uh, great timing on, as a shot blocker um, and, uh, you know, is a, is a force defensively. So, you know, they've, I think they've only lost two games since the last week in January. Uh, so they're, they're playing well at the right time. And we're a team that really was banged up with injuries kind of throughout the first two-thirds of the season. And as they've gotten healthy, uh, they've really found their stride. <coughs> Any questions out there? Okay, Coach. We'll let Thank you off you. easy. Good luck tomorrow. Okay. Take a bit of a break now, and we will uh, resume this afternoon right here at uh, 345. Thank you.
strip these people. Huh. 